Okay, so OpenAI has just had their launch for ChatGPT Atlas. And this is basically their launch of a browser, or rather their reskinning of the Chromium browser from Google. They're not the first ones to do this. Earlier in the year, we had Perplexity do the same thing with Comet, and they basically launched a browser with almost identical features to what we've seen come out today from OpenAI. And I've got to be honest that if anything, I think perhaps the perplexity one is a little bit more interesting of where they're going and the kind of things that they're doing. But OpenAI is also following on from Anthropic launching as a Chrome extension about a month and a half ago now. The key thing with all of these is that they realize the power of a browser. And don't be mistaken, we're seeing a battle for getting people to change their browser. And if you're going to get significant market share in this answer engine game, you need to have your own browser. You don't want to be having your users constantly accessing all your services through a Google Chrome browser. So both Perplexity and ChatGPT have gone the way of using Chromium, which makes the most sense rather than having to develop a browser from scratch. It gives them a whole platform that they can make use of already. They can import all your bookmarks. They can do all that kind of thing. So let's go through the key features that they basically put in here. So the first thing is this now just becomes your default way to interact with ChatGPT, that it's there rather than you having to open a separate app or a tab in your browser, you've got this where you can actually use this. But more than this, they've rolled out what they're calling Ask ChatGPT. And this is where you can have a side pop in where you can chat about the content that you've got on the page. Basically, it's just pulling in the content of the page as context. You can then just chat with it. This is not really that new. People have done Chrome extensions that have done this kind of thing. You can actually do more fancy stuff if you're doing a Chrome extension where you could have it customize exactly like what you want. You go to a page, it just automatically summarizes stuff. And I think that the sort of whole idea where this is going to really get some traction is around browser memory. That if they've been watching you go to a whole bunch of different sites, they'll be able to remind you when you ask things like, what was the site I was looking at yesterday that had an article like this? That's the kind of thing where this Ask ChatGPT and the browser memory stuff is going to become really powerful. The other big feature that they've introduced similar to what Perplexity has done, is the whole idea of having an agent running for you. You can see in this example here that when you put it into agent mode, it has the ability to go off and find things for you and do tasks for you as well. Now, in my experience of testing it, I've found this to be sort of mixed on both ChatGPT Atlas and Comet. Not to mention that on all of these services, this ends up being really slow and tedious if you're actually sitting there watching it do something. The last main feature that ChatGPT Atlas has actually launched with is this ability to just insert uh, text wherever you are. They're calling this cursor chat, and this is basically inline text generation where you could say, okay, here's my email, please reply to this email for me. And I think this is something that a lot of people will like and actually could end up being the killer feature of this is that it's often a pain to copy something across to ChatGPT or Claude or Gemini, get the answer and then copy it back. So having this very quick inline text generation where you can say, hey, write me a response to this email is probably going to be one of the key sort of features for this. Now, they do make the point that they've got a lot of security and privacy controls in here so that you can allow ChatGPT to see things. You can actually run the agent tasks either logged in or not logged in. I do like that feature a lot. It does seem to be a cool thing they've added. My guess is that is probably enough to at least get people trying this out. So you can see here, they're constantly trying to reassure people that you're in control. You're the one who actually does this. So like I mentioned, the browser itself is good. I did find it funny watching the launch that Sam Altman talked about that this is just a great browser all round. It's smooth. It's very quick. 
and nice to use. Well, that's not surprising because it basically is Chromium, right? It's the same core engine and system that is being used for most of the browsers that are out there nowadays. Anyway, let's jump in and look at how you get set up with this and have a quick play with it. Okay, to get started with Atlas, you can just come over to chatgpt.com slash Atlas, and you'll be able to see here where you can download it. This is currently only available for Mac OS. It's not available for Windows yet, but my guess is that we'll see it come along very soon. And it's also gonna be really interesting to see how long before they have a mobile version of this as well. So in here, we can see the actual features. Agent is one of the big things that they're pushing in here. This seems to be using their same setup that they've done for agents before, like the computer use agents before, except now it's running locally on your machine as opposed to running on a machine in the cloud actually turns out to be a lot cheaper for OpenAI to do that. So that makes a lot of sense. Okay, once you've got it installed, it's going to ask you, do you want to import data from another browser? I'm going to skip this. I don't want OpenAI sucking up all my browser information. And we can see that this is where the memory feature is really coming in, right? They're going to have things like where you can turn on browser memories, make your cursor a collaborator, I'm not going to set it as my default. It's interesting that if you do set it as your default browser, you boost your ChatGPT limits. As you can see, I'm now done. It's telling me I joined ChatGPT 1200 days ago, which I think is more than three years. And it's only been out for that. And I joined Atlas two minutes ago. All right, let's jump in and have a play with it. You can see that we could just do the normal sort of things of go to amazon.com here. I'm going to have Amazon not liking the fact that I'm using a ChatGPT browser. And then you can see I've got access to this sort of inline ChatGPT here. I can ask it, okay, go and actually find something for me. Now, I didn't turn on the agent. So you can see it's thinking about what to do. So now it's asking me, okay, would I like to start using the agent? I'll say yes. And then now I've got this agent mode may introduce risks. This is obviously a key part of this. I'm gonna start as logged out. Now it's taking over my browser and using it in agent mode. And we can see that this, because it's kind of running over the top of the actual browser as well. At any point I can take control or I stop it. That said, I'd still be quite reluctant to use this with my credit card logged in, etc. So one of the things with many of the agent browser or technically these are called sort of computer use agents is that they're very slow right you're sort of sitting around waiting for ages for them to be able to run things so they're really the kind of thing that you want to just run in the background and then leave it so we can see that it's gone off it's found some stuff interestingly it hasn't changed my browser window so i can't see what it's actually found and it doesn't look like I can click into the product or anything like that. Has it given me a new tab? No, it's just given me another Amazon tab. That one I would say is a bit of a fail. So you can see when we click into agent mode, we've got the ability to run that logged in or logged out. I do think that's a really cool thing they've put in here. On the whole, this is just more of the same stuff that we've seen. I'm not seeing anything hugely interesting Okay, so I'm running it now in agent mode. I'm asking it to go and find out about the new James Bond movie. I'm curious to see like what can it actually find? Where does it look? That kind of thing. Don't forget there are a lot of sites now that are blocking OpenAI. So how is that going to work if you're using the OpenAI browser and you're trying to go to some of these sites? Are we going to see that? This browser is just not going to work on certain sites or not. Okay, we can see that it went off and did some stuff. Now, I didn't actually see where it went. So it's come back with information. The information, I think, is probably okay. We've got some nice different citations. Really no different than what we would have in chatgpt.com. That is interesting. We can see if we click here, the different search results. We can see different images really trying to basically just sort of become, I guess, a search engine in here. 
it is kind of funny that for videos, everything seems to be pretty much YouTube most of the time. And we can see that, okay, they've gone and gotten some news results that relate to this in some way. So just to finish up, this is clearly still very much early days with Atlas. I'm actually kind of surprised that they rushed this out, but my guess is that over time we will see this get a lot better. If you don't have access to something like Claude Chrome, or you don't have access to Perplexity, etc., I know they were tightly controlling access. This is now open to pretty much everyone. And the agent stuff, I think you need to have a paid account, but everything else you can use for free. It's going to be interesting to see, do people adopt this or not? And it's also going to be interesting to see between now and the end of the year, what is going to be Google's sort of answer to this? Are we going to see a lot of these kind of features just be automatically integrated into Chrome? Google obviously doesn't have the antitrust issues around Chrome now that they did perhaps a couple of months ago. So let me know in the comments what you think. I'm kind of on the fence. I'm not sure I necessarily would be using this as my main browser day to day. I would like to see what else they're going to add to this to actually sort of empower it. It could be interesting to see how the computer use agents in this are actually working and be able to get a sense of what they're doing in there if you're trying to build agents yourself, etc. Anyway, as always, if you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.